hi. Yes, we know we suck at updates and stuff like that, but as we explained previously, we're working now, and, well, that eats up a great deal of our time and a great deal of our energy. Believe me, it's a physically demanding job. Um, but, but on that front, as it's working out, you know, things are, are going well, as we said in the last one. And uh, the only real issue was remaining, more or less, in, in our needs uh, was two days in a row <laughs> off. You know, the split days off just weren't doing it because we never really felt like we were letting down off of that. You know, you know when you're at work and you're all, you know, it's and then uh, the weekend you can at least relax, but like for Saturday you're still kind of, <clears throat> anyway. It was just grinding, and we knew that it was going to play havoc on us sooner or later, and also the fact that it was getting difficult to schedule therapy, uh, you know, on Tuesdays and whatnot, so uh, better flexibility for the therapist on Monday, uh, which we have been following through with. We're just, uh, I think we're into our fourth appointment now. Next time will be the fifth. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, we're just now just now get, getting ready to uh well or will be in the next session dig into the trauma again after what <laughs> almost three years now um a two uh, and some odd change i don't know we always tend to round up um plus you know did things aren't always exactly factual which can be frustrating when you're trying to explain something and you know what you meant and what your mouth meant to say but your mouth didn't say that and the other person just didn't get it and then you have to re-explain yourself all over again while you're trying to hold the damn thought in your mind or fact in your brain to begin with anyway uh so and and <laughs> this in and alone of uh was uh, a big step you know getting just asking for the second day but it was it was a two-in-one because we had actually, through the course of conversation with one of our assistants, we have three managers, assist, main manager, assistant, and assistant, or assistant to the assistant. However, we're just their assistant manager. But through the <clears throat> process of conversation that we've been in with her, the lower assistant manager and the one on the bottom, you know, she was talking about some of the trauma and difficulties with her boyfriend and whatnot, you know, so we just got talking and so we kind of like came out to her, you know, it's like, cause we were talking about PTSD and dissociation and whatnot. And she's like, and I'm like, uh, do you know what D and D is? And she's like, yeah, that's that coping mechanism. That's that coping condition. Right. And, you know, and I'm like, Oh my God, some real facts or real, you know, information is actually getting out there that some just rando person basically, knows uh about you know and and doesn't think is oh so you know we kind of clued her in without going into too much detail obviously but that we had been diagnosed with it and you know this is something that we're, we're not shitting about the diagnosis five years ago we were diagnosed with it came out of nowhere we didn't expect it and we've got the stack of paperwork to prove it and we'll happily produce it at need uh, you know, to, to prove that this is what we've got anyway. But the point is, is that we, so after that conversation it was kind of like, okay, cool. You know, one of our managers, you know, actually, or, you know, knows our condition and knows, you know, cause we went over basic PTSD triggers, which is, you know, like don't sneak up behind me and stuff like that. And the fact that we make miss context clues in conversation because we take things so literally at times. Because uh, it's just the, the way that the trauma has, you know, wired the brain. You're constantly looking for the other shoe to drop or for some hidden message or meaning or something like that. So it can make communications with coworkers and, and managers to be very, very difficult sometimes. But instead of hiding it and keeping it to ourselves and not saying anything about it, uh, which would be our normal reaction, we actually opened up. And much to our surprise, uh, you know, she was receptive to that. Well, a couple of days after that, we, we just, we got to thinking and it was just the split days off was really wearing on us. And we talked with our therapist and she's like, can you do Mondays? And we're like, no, no, we'll try. So we decided, you know, it's like weigh the pros and cons because we don't want to go to the main manager and say, you know, look, we need two days in a row off, you know, because the stores close on Sunday. We don't need, you know, Saturday and Sunday because we don't. 
and then, you know, Sunday, Monday is much better for, you know, medical appointments and stuff and just the shit that we have to deal with when we're at this point in our life past 50. Uh, so we just basically just decided to take our heart and our hands and more or less destiny in our hands. And, and fortunately, uh, all of our managers are female from the top down. That's... <laughs> We appreciate that very, very much. You have no idea how much we appreciate that. Um, yeah. uh, but anyway, um, we decided to basically take the situation in hand. And when we sat and we asked to sit down with the, our main manager and, you know, we were like, you know, remember when you told us you might be able to pull us a couple of, you know, Saturday, Sunday type things, you know, uh, you know, shuffling around. And we're just like, we don't need that. Can we please have... Sunday, Monday, and here's why, you know, have you heard of DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder? And she's like, mm-hmm. And uh, through the, and it's like, okay, we were, you know, we gave her the, the basics feel, you know, five years ago we were diagnosed, here's what it, what it does, what it's about, here's what some of our triggers are and some of what our tells are. So if we start to act this way, you know, uh, can we please take, you know, like 15 minute break or something like that for, you know, mental health break. And she's like, Oh yeah, no, absolutely. And this was something that, you know, the other manager had basically said as well. And as it turns out, the main manager and the one assistant, they also have mental health issues that they're struggling with and are in therapy for, I mean, not as bad as DID, obviously. And then, you know, I don't want to say anything in public, but, you know, enough aware to, you know, it's like anxiety and, and things like that. The stuff that we suffer from, thank you very much for being on the, you know, tertiary scale of the structural dissociation, you know, at the bottom, yay, we get everything in the crap pile that is above. Um, so yeah, uh, much to our great surprise. And she was like, no, yeah, absolutely. We can do that. You know, cause we explained to her, you know, it's like, we don't want you coming to you like we're, you know, some kind of, Ooh, expecting big treatment after a month or anything, you know, cause we've been managers and we know how tight scheduling and how bitchy scheduling can be. So, uh, but we wanted, because we had a perfectly valid reason. And normally, like I said, we, we said, uh, we would suppress this, you know, and the idea is the hidden disorder, you know, don't talk about it don't let on, you put on that public face mask and, you know, you're just la da 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 and you get home and it's, uh, you know, uh, you know what we're talking about. So it, it was really scary. It's like the, the whole time, you know, because we asked her in the morning, it's like, when you have a few minutes, can we catch your ear in private? And because we'd been debating about it for like two days and then we were just absolutely racked with anxiety going into it. You know, it's like, how are they going to react? Is there going to think that this is a valid thing? You know, or they don't want proof or anything. But no, she was totally cool about it, totally accepting about it. And, you know, uh, I told her, you know, I have already told so and so, you know, and you can tell the third manager if you need to. So uh, apparently, you know, big manager in the first, you know, first one that knew they talked about it and everything. So, but now they're aware the, the main things are, is that number one, and these are all good things. Yeah. Because this is, this is another reason why we're sharing our work experience with you because like it or not, you know, if, if you're not going to win disability or something like that for DID or any of the ancillary effects, you know, apparently you have to cut yourself or be a danger to yourself or others in order to do that. Anyway, we're getting off the sidetrack you're going to have to go to work at some point. You, you, you just, you have to do it. It's one of these things that has to be done. You have to fight past the anxiety and the phobias and the triggers, you know, and this is why we were aiming for this particular job, dead simple job, you know, where you don't have to really get involved. It, it fit all of our criteria and working the part-time actually has been good. I mean, yeah, we still get that drag in the morning. And I was like, Oh man, just want to go back to bed. You know, or you just want to call in. We're we're actually narrowing now that we think that some of our past, you know, activities in, in the past with jobs, it's it's now we're beginning to understand where some of those impulses came from. Anyway. Um damn, lost my train of thought. Um too much going on upstairs. So anyway, yeah, uh so now they've been filled in on it and they know our triggers and we know it's okay to take a mental health break if we need it or walk away. All we have to do is just say, Hey, look, and actually we needed one today because we got into conversation with the first, um, 
first manager that we told, you know, just uh, shooting the breeze and whatnot. We were talking about kids, which led to, you know, our late wife. And, you know, we were going over some of how she died and whatnot. And it just, the emotional part just decided to open up. And it's like, ooh, and we're trying, you know, we're breathing. And she's like, oh, no. She's like, uh, she's, you know, she's like, bring it in, bring it in. And it's like, no, you know, if we get a hug, we're just going to collapse completely, you know. So she's like, well, take, a, take 15 minutes. I insist, take 15 minutes, you know, because it was... We haven't talked a great deal about our first wife on the channel. It was it was her death was really traumatic for us in a great variety of ways, and that's all I'm going to say because it's still kind of there from earlier. Um, but uh, so yeah, we got our two days in a row, which will enable us to finally buckle down and get the next little stories episode shot. It's it's everything is is preset except for the camera and getting personal personal. Yes, okay, fine. Getting me to allow Percival to film, whether I feel like it or not. I'm sorry, there's been a lot going on, okay? Please don't make a huge thing about this. It's, it's, you've been very patient. You've been very patient, okay? But part of it has also been you because when you want to do it is not a convenient point in time. So either you need to. You just you you need to fully front in the time frame that we have, Percival. Really, seriously, it's the only way that this is going to get done. I've set up just about everything else that I possibly can. So please, just okay. We'll have some time up. We'll get it done this weekend. Okay, promise. Oi. Um. <laughs> Sorry, when uh, when one of your alters co-fronts with you and you're having a conversation. <laughs> of course, you guys are only hearing half the conversation. What? What? Meow, I'm right in here. Yes, I know. Meow, come here. But yeah, positive things. Um, you know, got our days off together now. Yes, I love you. You're furry and a good kitty. Yes, you are. What? What? Why are you being so vocal? Huh? Why are you being so vocal? You know your voice is going out to over 2,000 people here, right? Right? Yeah, that's your answer to everything. Um, sorry. So, anyway, uh, yeah, uh, good things. Days off together, so we'll be able to concentrate and get stuff done more easily. Yes, hello. And our managers now know about our DID and are actually accepting of it and at least have a basic, you know, level of understanding about, you know, what needs to be done if we start to spin out or if we start to have a flashback or something like that. And are going to be more accepting about that. Again, thank God. Uh, they're, they're all women. <laughs> Yeah, um, not being like reverse sexist there, but we are more comfortable around women, always have been. Yes, part of that is the, is the programming. Anyway, we, won't, we don't want to get into that, uh, but lots of positive things. So, yeah, um, this whole work experience, while it has been tumultuous, while it has stirred stuff up, or it's caused a lot of anxiety, um, it's, we're settling into the groove now. And, of course, it's also nice to be able to have money to buy things and take care of some of the things that uh, were on the back burner or backslid on or just didn't get done because the money wasn't there. And, you know, so little things, but, yeah, it's like you know, next up is, you know, new classes for us and get the cats to the vet. You know, it's just, and pay the property taxes. <laughs> Life and I are going to have to come together on that one. I should at least be able to pitch some her way after this next check. Anyway, yeah, money is a, money. It's both doesn't matter and it matters. But we're we're tired of not having it, so now we're having it again. So yay! <laughs> um, so that's about it, really. Uh, we just there's been so much going on, and I know we've been radio silent, and we do do that from time to time. It doesn't mean that we're in crisis or anything. It just we don't have time. You know, it's 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 been nuts uh, settling into the new groove. So, uh, but we wanted to touch base with you guys and let you know where we were and if we're okay and everything. Yes, we are. It's just here's what's all been going on. So, 
Uh, lots of chaos, but lots of positive to positive chaos, if that can be such a thing. Anyway, so, but uh, there's the video. That's really all that we wanted to vlog about today. I can't think of anything else. We're going to go and relax because we're just still kind of beat. Got home, took a shower after dinner, and because uh, uh, we're just... <laughs> You're working in a donation center, you get covered in all kinds of stuff, but ugh, dust and dirt, the least of it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and sign off. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you to all of our new subscribers. We are over 2,000 now. 2K, yay! I think we're on 2010. Uh, so just thanks. Thank you guys for coming to the channel, to choosing to subscribe to the channel, uh, to watch our various forms of content. So welcome to all of the new folks. And uh, for those of you who are new and haven't really poked around in the library, careful with anything with a trigger warning on it. We don't place those lightly. So take them seriously if you see something marked with a trigger warning. <laughs> we, you know, expect you to practice viewer discretion when we advise it. Yes, hello. I'm trying to wrap up here. Thank you very much. What? You're breaking into the scene. Silly cat. Uh, so anyway, that's it, guys. And as always, we remind you that you are loved, that you are strong, and that you are not alone. Chris, Data, and the rest of the Infinity System signing off. We'll see you guys next time. Yes, we will get the little stories out soon. We promise. I promise. Mr. Editor and Filmer and everything promises. Now just tell Percival to get his butt out so that we can film. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. See you next time.